The $13 billion Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier was sent to the Mediterranean because of the situation in Israel. This is the world's largest ship equipped with advanced weapon systems, the best ship defense system, and 90 maneuverable fighters that are ready to attack at any second. Gerald Ford is accompanied by an equally dangerous cruiser and four destroyers with nuclear missiles, as well as a reinforced U.S. air group. According to the Pentagon, such measures were taken in response to the Hamas attack on Israel. After a series of meetings, it was decided to strengthen the Defense Department's position in the Mediterranean region, and the Gerald Ford Strike Group is the best solution to deter the enemy. And if you're wondering how the United States can help Israel from the sea, we'll explain it all now. The USS Gerald R. Ford, a new generation aircraft carrier, was launched in 2009. And there was an urgent need to strengthen the U.S. Navy. The aircraft carrier was designed and built by Huntington Ingalls Industries, which is the only nuclear ship manufacturer in the United States. You heard right, it's a nuclear ship because Gerald R. Ford has two nuclear reactors weighing over a thousand tons each. They allow the ship to serve for a very long time, as the developers themselves say. And the foundation that we're building here today at Gerald R. Ford will last for the next 50 plus years. It will last throughout our lives. If we get this right, Gerald R. Ford will go on to be not just the most technologically advanced warship in the Navy, but the greatest warship in the Navy. If such a reactor were on the ground, it could power an entire city without interruption. However, on this giant ship, almost all of the energy goes to power a pair of giant electric motors the size of four pickup trucks stacked together. They develop 1,100 megawatts of power, which is equal to 1.5 million horsepower. However, Gerald R. Ford cannot fly on the water like a race car because with a deck 1,100 feet long and 260 feet wide and 245 feet high, the ship weighs 100,000 tons. It's the first time we can see an aircraft carrier of this scale, and it's not without reason that it's the largest in the world. You're probably eager to find out what this monster's armed with. We'll tell you in a moment. First of all, when you enter the deck, you'll notice the legendary Mark 15 Phalanx Sea Whiz Air Defense System. This system is considered to be one of the best anti-aircraft artillery systems in the world today, and all because it has a rate of fire of 4,500 rounds per minute and an initial projectile velocity of 3,600 feet per second. LPWS is the uh, weapon system you see in front of you. Uh, it's designed to shoot down incoming rockets and mortars coming into the fob. When attacking, the phalanx creates a continuous arc of projectiles that looks like a laser. By the way, Gerald R. Ford also has a laser. Lockheed Martin's Laws Shipboard Laser System is powered by the aircraft carrier's nuclear reactor, which allows for continuous attacks on enemy aircraft and missiles at a distance of three miles. The laser's power is enough to damage aircraft electronics or completely destroy projectiles flying towards Gerald R. Ford. And if you need to not only disable, but also destroy enemy aircraft, the RIM-116 will come into play. The gun looks like a complex from a science fiction movie and holds 20 missiles capable of shooting down targets at a distance of 6 miles at a flight speed of over 2,200 miles per hour. The most important part of Gerald R. Ford is its airstrike group, consisting of 90 fighters and helicopters. According to the Pentagon spokesman, before the operation to deploy the carrier to the Mediterranean, Washington also reinforced squadrons of F-35, F-15, F-16 fighters, and an A-10 attack aircraft, which are on board the four. It's difficult to say which of these aircraft is the most dangerous because each of them poses a deadly threat to the enemy. The F-35 is perhaps the best modern fighter jet as it's equipped with the latest technological developments, ranging from laser and missile weapons to a unique engine that can make a vertical landing. Qualities, it's the, it's the best flying aircraft I've had the opportunity to fly. The same can be said about the F-16 as it's the best fourth generation fighter capable of killing even newer aircraft using a combination of extreme maneuverability and speed as well as attacking with supersonic missiles at a distance of 70 kilometers. Conceived of as a, a lightweight, low-cost fighter, primarily for air-to-air, -air, but it evolved to possess air-to-air uh, -air and air-to-ground, a true multi-role. And then there's the legendary A-10 Thunderbolt II shooter with its incredibly powerful GAU-8 Avenger cannon, capable of firing 3,900 rounds per minute and destroying any ground target. 
The A-10 may be outdated, but it still serves as a reminder of the majestic power of American aviation. We were able to go places that the other fixed wing assets may or may not have been able to get in very well. Uh, and we definitely went places that the helicopters could get in. As you can see, there's a huge variety of weapons on board the Gerald Ford, but the ship also has some very unusual equipment, such as a cable landing system for helicopters. For a helicopter such as the Apache to land on an aircraft carrier, it needs to make a vertical landing. However, it's impossible to do so with the high wave activity. At this point, a special rope is used to pull the helicopter to the deck, allowing it to land safely. As already mentioned, the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier has a wider and more spacious deck, which makes it easier to take off and land aircraft. The new design also contains fewer obstacles and a more efficient organization of deck space, which contributes to safer and more efficient operations. In addition, the aircraft carrier is equipped with elevators that raise and lower aircraft and other equipment. So we have one less aircraft elevator than uh, Nimitz class. This has three as opposed to the four. Uh, and all that was part of the design to enhance flight deck usage. So that's a... Each elevator can lift up to 65 tons of cargo, and there are three of them at once. Below the upper deck of the ship, there's another deck resembling a huge parking lot with elite warbirds. There, you can also hide a stealth bomber like the B-21 Raider, which will suddenly take off and deliver a devastating blow to the center of the enemy base. However, for such purposes, Gerald R. Ford has reliable companions which sail with it wherever it goes. The strike group includes a Ticonderoga-class cruiser with guided missiles. Cruisers of this type are one of the most powerful and multi-purpose warships in the world and are widely used by the U.S. Navy. The Ticonderoga is equipped with the Aegis system, which is perhaps the best set of protection against enemy attacks. This system combines an advanced target detection and acquisition system, as well as SM-2 and SM-6 missile systems that can easily deal with enemy aircraft at a distance of 220 miles. The cruiser also has the means to search for and attack submarines, including deep-sea torpedoes. But the most interesting feature is the ability to attack land targets with Tomahawk-guided missiles. What's the specialty of this missile? Its incredible range of 1,000 miles. The missile is capable of carrying any type of warhead, from a high explosive to a cluster munition, so it's an extremely dangerous long-range and versatile weapon. Along with the cruiser Ticonderoga, Gerald Ford's strike group includes four more equally dangerous Arleigh Burke class destroyers. This is the main class of destroyers belonging to the U.S. Navy. They're able to hit an entire enemy army using the already mentioned SM-2 and SM-6 systems as well as Harpoon anti-ship missiles that can destroy enemy ships at a distance of 250 miles. The unique function of the Harpoon missile is its extremely high maneuverability and ability to fly at an altitude of about 16 feet above sea level. Such a missile is almost impossible to shoot down with other missiles, and the enemy could only use machine guns to defend itself. So, there is a, uh, a high bill up front for this carrier, without a doubt, as a first to class but it is designed from the outset to operate uh, more efficiently and to uh, have greater availability to the uh, reduced maintenance requirements. Arleigh Burke also has a 5-inch MK-45 artillery system, torpedoes, and unmanned aerial vehicles. The ships are equipped with modern electronics and communication systems that ensure constant communication and information integration with other ships. That's why Gerald Ford is protected by four such destroyers at once because together they can reconnoiter the territory using drones, transmit data to each other, and attack enemies from a great distance. At the same time, dangerous targets on the ground will be destroyed by the Ticonderoga cruiser, and all aviation will be taken over by Gerald R. Ford with its air group of the most modern fighters. The presence of such a fleet in the Mediterranean Sea should create a reliable support for Israel in the war with the enemy, and will also serve as a deterrent against the development of the conflict outside the state. This ship is so different from any other ship that have ever been on. And, and that holds true for all of our sailors. You know, no matter how many aircraft carriers you've been on before, you've never been on a Ford-class aircraft carrier. Everything we do is different. Previously, American and Turkish combat groups conducted large-scale military exercises in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. During these exercises, the modern aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford made a rapid deployment to improve maritime security. This news strangely coincides with the fact that the U.S. Navy is actively withdrawing its ships from ports due to the onset of Hurricane Hillary. 
The storm has already hit areas of Baja, California and Mexico and is expected to spread deeper into the U.S. states of California, Arizona and even Nevada. Hundreds of warships have already left the San Diego, Coronado and Point Loma naval bases and all of these ships will remain at sea until Hillary passes over the region. Is the most fearsome weapon on Earth represented by warships so afraid of the storm? Yes. After all, if no special steps are taken, any ship, even the largest one worth $13 billion, can be damaged. There is a, uh, a high bill up front for this carrier, without a doubt, it's the first in class, but it is designed from the outset to operate uh, more efficiently and to uh, have greater availability to the uh, reduced maintenance requirements. To ensure the safety of our sailors and ships, we're taking all necessary actions to mitigate potential damage to Third Fleet infrastructure and vessels caused by the storm, said Vice Admiral Michael Boyle, commander of the U.S. Third Fleet. Safety remains our top priority, and putting all combat-ready ships to sea makes it easier for us to manage the situation ashore. In such cases, withdrawal of the fleet from the harbor is almost a standard step. Ships can maneuver at sea to avoid a storm. To make sure that a huge warship like the USS Gerald Ford or a giant submarine like the Virginia could survive the worst storm, engineers took care of the actions that would be taken immediately in case of danger. The question for Virginia is, is how slow can you go? How well can you take that 8,000 ton submarine and control it in coastal waters a couple feet off the bottom? Can you move that ship inch by inch? Submarines are actually extremely simple. They usually dive to the depths where the storm's waters have the least impact. In addition, they can also use ballast reserve to control buoyancy and dive depth. But it all comes down to hiding at depth and waiting out a natural disaster. Aircraft carriers, for obvious reasons, cannot simply dive underwater. To protect multi-billion dollar ships, engineers had to find other ways. Modern aircraft carriers have design features that help reduce swaying during a storm. Aircraft carriers are naturally stable due to their size and air insides, the wider hull and low center of gravity physically helps the ship to stay in place even during strong waves. Such a ship is virtually impossible to capsize, but even with such a huge size, aircraft carriers can still be affected by natural ocean movements. This ship is so different from any other ship that I've ever been on, and, and that holds true for all of our sailors. You know, no matter how many aircraft carriers you've been on before, you've never been on a Ford class aircraft carrier. The most serious threat to a ship is not actually its hull and size, but what's on board. These include aircraft, helicopters, ammunition, and of course thousands of crew members. If the ship's unstable, it'll put the lives of personnel and equipment at risk, and it also needs to be level so that the aircraft can take off and land safely. Therefore, in addition to the special design, the U.S. Navy has developed various systems to keep the ship as stable as possible when it's in the ocean, such as ballast, stabilizers, and shock absorbers. These can be hydraulic stabilizers or even moving platforms. Ballast is an additional weight added to the hull of a ship that leads to a gradual increase in the center of gravity. For example, the Gerald Ford has four ballast tanks that can hold a whopping 26 million liters of water each and can each be moved along the hull to level the movement during a storm. The foundation that we are building here today, Gerald R. Ford, will last for the next 50 plus years. It will last throughout our lives. If we get this right, Gerald R. Ford will go on to be not just the most technologically advanced warship in the Navy, but the greatest warship. But that's not all. Modern aircraft carriers are equipped with advanced control systems that automatically respond to changes in wind and waves adjusting engines and rudder to maintain stability. It's safe to say that giants like Gerald Ford are not threatened by the storm, rather it's dangerous for all the equipment on the deck, including fighter jets. To secure the deck before the storm approaches, the crew can clean up by securing and removing equipment. So we have one less aircraft elevator than uh, Nimitz class. This has three as opposed to the four. Um, all that was part of the design to enhance flight deck usage. So that's a, a key aspect, right? That's what the carrier does. All these actions combine to ensure the safest possible navigation of the aircraft carrier, even in severe storms. An interesting solution called the high-tech pneumatic fenders has recently been invented for ships in port. This is a simple but ingenious invention that keeps ships safe when they're close to each other. In fact, these are pneumatic rubber floats measuring 40 feet by 20 feet. All port workers need to do is lower these floats between the two ships and a collision will be virtually impossible. 
In addition, all modern warships maintain close communication with meteorological services to obtain up-to-date information on weather conditions. This allows them to anticipate the onset of storms in advance and take appropriate actions, such as going out into the oceans away from storms. And here's the strange thing. The maneuvers of the U.S. warships coincided with the appearance of the aircraft carrier in the Black Sea and the Philippines military exercises. The offensive deployment of the USS Carl Vinson may not be saving the ship from the storm at all, but a real military operation. The Carl Vinson is one of the Nimitz's aircraft carriers in the U.S. Navy. It was launched in 1980 and since then has been actively involved in various operations and trainings, including combat operations during the Gulf War, as well as military operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, the aim of this kind of carrier is to have the best rate of launch and recovery. Its size is impressive, 1,090 feet long and about 130 feet wide. This ship weighs about 100,000 tons and uses a real nuclear reactor to move which, paired with a huge engine, accelerates the aircraft carrier to 35 miles per hour. The Carl Vinson carries dozens of defense systems, including missile systems and air defense systems, such as phallic sea winds. An aircraft carrier can accommodate more than 1,800 people, including crew and aviation personnel, but the most important thing it carries is, of course, an air group. There are 90 fighters, helicopters, and attack aircraft. This is not a joke. Uh, all this in a 42,000 tons uh, carrier, autonomous, able to, uh, uh, to sustain the life of, of 1,800 sailors. Particularly interesting are the deck-mounted F-18s, which can cause enormous trouble for the enemy. The F-A-18 is the world's most versatile fourth-generation fighter aircraft. Even its name says so. The letter F stands for fighter, and the letter A means it's also an attack aircraft. The Navy command wanted to get the most out of the F-A-18, so they set out to simultaneously increase the range, introduce stealth technologies, increase survivability, expand the area of impact on air and ground targets, and integrate modern weapons, including cruise missiles. But in the F-18, we're gonna fold these wings upright, and now there's an extra four to five feet of space. This total approach is explained as simply as possible. There's no room for different aircraft on the aircraft carrier, and it's necessary to make the most versatile option. That's why Super Hornet can really do almost anything. Flying as a conquest aircraft is easy. This is due to the ability to carry 12 AIM-120 missiles at once, which hit air targets at supersonic speeds. Sinking enemy ships with stealth missiles is also an easy task, as there are AGM-158Cs on board designed specifically for this purpose. Or maybe it's important to throw high-precision bombs at the enemy, up to 10 of them in one flight, and it can do that. Well, of course, the F-18 has smart technology built into almost all of the weapon systems. Almost all of the hardpoint uh, pylons and, and launchers are, uh, are smart technologies. The F-18 is even capable of acting as an air tanker. Can any other aircraft boast the same variety of capabilities? We don't think so. The F-A-18 safety margin is also in favor as the aircraft's design is adapted to withstand the rigors of catapult launches, hard landings on aircraft carriers, and salt water. The F-A-18 is by far the most capable aircraft that these young pilots have ever flown in. The appearance of such a ship as the Carl Vinson with F-18 fighters in the Black Sea can significantly affect Russian aggression against Ukraine because now the enemy has a third deterrent whose technology can easily wipe out the entire Russian fleet. Add to this the presence of the world's largest aircraft carrier, the Gerald Ford, in Turkish waters, from where it can safely reach the Black Sea and join the Carl Vinson. We think this will calm down the enemy's ardor, and the situation will gradually calm down. As of late, distrust between the United States and China has reached an all-time high. The mounting pressure has prompted America to take a bold step forward by allocating a whopping $13 billion for the development of a new laser aircraft carrier. The move is designed to showcase their dominance and deter their number one adversary. And astonishingly enough, it has 100% worked so far. This ship is so different from any other ship that I've ever been on, and, and that holds true for all of our sailors. You know, no matter how many aircraft carriers you've been on before, you've never been on a Ford-class aircraft carrier. The, the aircraft carrier USS Gerald Ford represents a new era in aircraft carrier development and is the undisputed flagship of the new U.S. Navy. 
The story began in 2005, when the U.S. Department of Defense awarded a contract to initiate the development of a new class of aircraft carriers. Leading the way was Huntington Ingalls Industries, the exclusive manufacturer of nuclear ships in the United States. Construction of the aircraft carrier commenced in 2006, starting with the hull and the subsequent installation of various systems and equipment. This meticulous process spanned a total of seven years, culminating in the carrier's launch in 2013, followed by extensive testing and adjustments. In 2017, the USS Gerald Ford was officially commissioned into the esteemed ranks of the U.S. Navy, assuming an active role within the fleet. Notable advancements include a new electric drive system and the integration of automated systems, resulting in a significantly reduced crew size. We've been able to reduce the manpower in this ship, the crew size, by about 600 people. The developers implemented several improvements to aircraft launch capabilities and also increased the number of deck elevators. However, the most notable addition was, of course, laser weaponry. Lockheed Martin assembled a team of engineers specializing in laser technology from around the world for a closed conference. By combining the expertise of these brilliant minds with the company's cutting-edge technology, they successfully created an incredibly powerful laser system known as LAWS-2. LAWS-2 is an automatic laser-directed energy system with multiple operational modes. Through the strategic arrangement of lenses and unique laser properties, its range has been extended threefold compared to the previous version. In its normal mode, the laser operates at a power of 200 kilowatts, effectively disabling enemy electronics and missiles up to six miles away. It poses a threat to fighters, projectiles, guided missiles, and enemy vessels. However, to ensure absolute protection, it has a second operational mode with 400 kilowatts of power, allowing it to engage enemy bombers and frigates from a range of 13 miles. This remarkable operational zone makes the LAWS-2 one of the most formidable military laser systems. Since it's powered by the aircraft carrier's nuclear reactors, it also possesses an ample energy supply. In addition to the laser system, the Gerald Ford is equipped with high-speed torpedoes, underwater mines, and machine gun air defense systems. These components work in tandem with the laser, providing continuous and around-the-clock defense capabilities. Furthermore, the ship is undergoing testing for an added layer of protection, invisibility. With a decade of experience in stealth technology derived from aircraft, the company HyperStealth Biotechnology has developed an absorptive coating specifically designed for ships. A reflective shell is created by employing a specially crafted metamaterial capable of manipulating the direction and speed of radar waves passing through the vessel. This advanced technology makes the ship's radar signature look like that of a fishing boat, or renders it completely invisible. With these advancements, the Gerald Ford gains the added advantage of stealth, allowing it to approach the enemy undetected, disable coastal defenses with its laser system, and unleash surprise attacks with its fleet of fighters. There is no one, absolutely no one, who would be prouder of the commissioning of this mighty ship than the President of the United States. A fleet of 75 state-of-the-art fifth-generation aircraft stands poised for immediate deployment, and they're piloted by highly skilled aces. However, outdated systems of acceleration and steam ejection utilized on previous aircraft carriers have proven inadequate for executing truly swift attacks. That's why the Gerald Ford is pioneering the utilization of cutting-edge electromagnetic catapults. These advanced catapults take up minimal space and provide fighters with instantaneous acceleration, enabling them to get up to the required speed for takeoff. So we have one less aircraft elevator than uh, Nimitz class. This has three as opposed to the four. Um, all that was part of the design to enhance flight deck usage. So that's a, a, a key aspect, right? That's what the carrier does. The catapults employed on the Gerald Ford are powered by the same nuclear reactors that supply energy to the entire ship. Two state-of-the-art A1B reactors, each the size of a truck, generate heat that is then converted into electricity. This electrical power fuels all onboard systems, including the propulsion itself. It's worth noting that the Gerald Ford is different from older aircraft carriers in that it uses a direct-drive electric propulsion system instead of steam turbines. 
This innovative system optimizes energy efficiency and minimizes losses as the energy is converted. The direct drive system employs multiple electric motors that draw electrical energy directly from the nuclear reactors. This arrangement empowers the aircraft carrier to achieve impressive speeds of up to 30 knots while providing exceptional maneuverability. The system revolves around four propellers, each boasting a diameter of 23 feet. Positioned at the stern of the vessel, these propellers are the most advanced of their kind on any U.S. Navy ship. They've been meticulously engineered to deliver maximum efficiency, fuel economy, and overall performance to the aircraft carrier. When the need arises to decelerate and bring the ship to a quick stop, the reliable anchor braking system is engaged. Remarkably, the Gerald Ford is also at the forefront in this regard as well, with an anchor weighing an incredible 40 tons. There is a, uh, a high bill up front for this carrier, without a doubt, as a first of class, but it is designed from the outset to operate uh, more efficiently and to uh, have greater availability due to the uh, reduced maintenance requirements. The Gerald Ford is the 11th aircraft carrier of the United States and follows in the footsteps of legendary predecessors like the Nimitz and the Forrestal. While the latter has long been retired from service, Nimitz remains an active member of the naval fleet. At 1,092 feet long and 253 feet wide, the Nimitz can accommodate up to 80 fighters. By comparison, the Gerald Ford boasts a longer deck measuring 1,109 feet long and 256 feet wide, allowing it to house up to 90 fighters simultaneously. Unlike its predecessor, the old aircraft carrier relies on steam catapults and is equipped solely with machine gun anti-aircraft systems. This pales in comparison to the new electromagnetic catapults and laser defense systems on the new ship, which are far more effective. Originally, there were plans to construct an even larger and more powerful Ford-class aircraft carrier, However, this ambitious vision would have required significantly more time and effort. Nevertheless, the United States has already entered into a contract for the construction of a new Ford-class carrier named Enterprise, which aims to embody the power and capabilities that the military ultimately wants. That being said, the current version of the Ford still offers some significant advantages. Its design allows the ship to navigate through storms and colossal waves at full speed covering distances that would challenge others. At top speed, the aircraft carrier can deploy AI-guided auto-targeting laser cannons, swiftly neutralizing the enemy before they even realize the colossal flagship is there. With two nuclear reactors powering all the weapons and the invisibility system, combined with fast attack aircraft, helicopters, and drones, the Gerald Ford is the most formidable vessel of our time, with combat power rivaling that of an entire army. And the foundation that we're building here today, Gerald R. Ford, will last for the next 50 plus years. It will last throughout our lives. If we get this right, Gerald R. Ford will go on to be not just the most technologically advanced warship in the Navy, but the greatest warship in the Navy. The dedicated team of engineers working on the Ford faced daunting challenges and tight deadlines, but they rose to the occasion, overcoming every obstacle and delivering the project on schedule. Their remarkable efforts have resulted in a creation that strikes fear into the hearts of enemies. In the future, Ford-class ships are set to replace the Nimitz carriers, thereby becoming the backbone of the U.S. Navy. As time progresses and technology advances, even more powerful ships will come into existence, opening up new possibilities for naval superiority. The introduction of the Ford has had a significant impact, even causing China to reevaluate its ambitions and provocations towards the United States. There are few ships in the world that can rival the Ford, leaving opponents with limited options. China's potential for matching the United States lies in their Type 3 aircraft carrier, which is currently undergoing testing. The Chinese aim to equip their vessel with artificial intelligence that could command an entire fleet of drones. However, testing outcomes remain to be seen. While its adversaries are still in the testing phase, the United States is already putting laser weapons on its other ships, like the USS Ross. There are also plans